Hey my friend, this is Darnell Clark, your industry leader in this career game. Hey, the answer man, your career coach. Hey, today's topic is the number one job interviewing mistake everyone makes and how to avoid it. <laughs> but before I started it, I created an interviewing cheat sheet. It's a seven surefire ways so you can get more job offers. This is a powerful interviewing preparation cheat sheet guide. You will have to understand this interviewing process because most people don't, right? Stay to the end. I'll show you how to get it. It's something you will absolutely love. It will serve you well. I also created a YouTube video that explains how to actually prep for in-person Personal person, man on man, woman on woman interview in detail. Go below and click on the link to watch it. I'll show you to the end to get the actual cheat sheet. With both of those combined, you could be able to knock out and blow away any interview, I promise you. So here's the thing. Most people are not trained to take interviews. Most people don't know the interview techniques. We're not trained for that. We should be, but we're not. We now live in this job hopping, company downsizing, always looking for your next gig, free agency marketplace. You will need to be able to master the interview process, but most people don't know. Most people go to an interview and just try to wink it off the cuff and they don't do well. Or well, most people are so freaking scared, you know, in the interview and they don't do well either. So I'm gonna show you what it takes to have an extraordinary, remarkable, amazing career so you can always understand how to handle an interview. Listen, my friend, gone are the days that you able to hunker down, find one or two jobs your whole career and stay there your whole career. You will have multiple jobs in multiple careers in your lifetime. I have one thing to say about that. I need you to get used to it. That's the game we're playing, my friend. Gone are the days you're able to lock and load on, on in one organization. From the Bureau of Labor Statistics says, the average life cycle of a job is only five years. Every three to five years, you're gonna be looking for another job or another, another role in your company. We don't stay at jobs very long. And for the first time in our nation's history, more people quit their jobs than got laid off. Every month, over 2 million people are looking for work and 80% of them are already employed. We have become a job hopping nation. I don't call us a job hopping nation. I call us free agent. We are a free agent nation, unbound and untethered to one organization, taking our talents to the whole marketplace instead of one job or one boss in one company. That's the game. So I don't know if you know me, know you know me, my friend, but I'm different, right? Most career coaches comes from HR or recruiter. Oh no, not me. Let me tell you why you should be listening to me regarding this interviewing thing. I'm a practitioner. See, I went to school and got a computer science degree and an MBA and got all these IT certifications and leadership certifications. And I started working in, in, my, in my IT organizations for IBM. I worked for IBM three separate times, IBM, Ernst & Young, GE, Coca-Cola, AT&T, just to name a few, my friend. I was a job hopper from day one. So let me give you some of the stats so, so you'll see what I'm talking about, because I'm different, right? See, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an expert in this career game. See, when I started understanding that it isn't the person who's the most qualified to get the job, it's the person who's qualified at getting the job. Did you hear that? The person who gets the job is not the most qualified. The person who gets the job today is the most qualified at getting employed. You must become an expert at getting employed. So this is what I did. As a job hopper over the past 20 years, I held 25 high paying jobs. In IT, not working for you know Foot Locker or McDonald's or Burger Kings or Macy's as a real as a re retail salesperson. No, no, no. I graduated and jumped in working at IT companies. Twenty-five jobs over twenty years. 
right? To get those 20 jobs, 25 jobs, I've held, I've held over 300 interviews as a job seeker. From those 300 interviews, I have submitted five, my, I submitted over 5,000 resumes. How in the world, Darnell, you know you submitted 5,000 resumes? Because I had a process, a procedure. I kept track of everything I knew who I submitted to, what resume I submitted. I customized my resume for every position. I was customizing my resume back then before you even needed to. Now it is a necess necessity for you to customize your resume for every position so you can get past the applicant tracking system and HR. And HR is not your friend. HR and applicant tracking system have one process and one purpose only to eliminate, to eliminate as many resumes as possible. As a job seeker, then early in my career with IBM, they promoted me to leadership. And for the first time I was in leadership. As a hiring manager, I have reviewed well over 2,000 resumes. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Excuse me. And I have given well over 200 interviews and I have personally hired over 150 people to work directly for me. I know what a good interview is. I know what a bad one is. I know exactly from both sides of the fence as a job seeker, seeker get, taking all those interviews and as a, as a hiring authority, giving all those interviews. That was my background, my friend. So when you come to me, I am the person who hires people. I am not HR. I'm that back end hiring authority who hired over 250 people to work directly for me. Through all that, this is what I have seen is the number one interviewing mistake that everyone make. It's not what you think it is. It isn't. Yeah, you gotta have issues. Yeah, there's a lot of people having issues with answering the question, tell me about yourself, because they're giving this high level information. If you don't know how to address and how to handle that question, go below in the description. I got a link down there to handle the question, tell me about yourself. If you don't know how to handle that, go down there, click on that link and watch it. It is not a high level general elevator pitch. It is a specific value add proposition. If you don't know what that is, go below, click on that link and watch that video. Now, here's the number one thing. The number one thing that most people that have a mistake coming into the interview is not connecting their past experience with the actual job announcement requirement. When you see an actual requirement, you should see yourself in there. You should see, yeah, I have done that before. Did you hear it? Not that you can do it. That is, I have done it. We hire people for two reasons, likability and fitness. We must see that you have actually done it before. Not that you can do it. Mm -mm. That's not the interview. That's why when, when they ask you questions, they want to see if you've done it before. That's why your resume always has to be in past tense. We want to see in your resume that you have done it before. We hire people because you have done it. When you hear somebody, I want to hear, about it, say, hear somebody say, I want you to come in, hit the ground running. That means I need you to hit the ground running because you have done it before. I, you need little to no supervision. You can hit the ground running because I am not training you. In the marketplace, we don't have training budgets anymore. We hire people because you've done it before. That is the number one mistake. People to ask me all the time, Darnell, how do I take an interview in a job I have never done before? That is the most stupid question I've ever heard. You don't do that. Stop that. If you are trying to go get jobs and, and interviews that you have never done before, you will never be successful. If you don't know how to engage in a opportunity that you haven't done before, I did a video on that too. <laughs> go below. It'll tell you how to, to, to make sure you get that information, get that experience in you first before you go and take an interview for somebody to hire you. So stop that, right? Go for positions that you actually have experience to do. That is the number one. So when they start asking you these, 
behavior questions. You know the behavior question? Oh, you don't know what a behavior question is? Come on. <laughs> if you don't know how to answer a behavior question with the STAR method, go below. I had a, a series of how to handle and how to pass a behavior interview question. I did a four part series. If you don't know anything about that, go below. Click on those links, watch the whole thing. So when they ask you a behavior question and the behavior question is all around, it is a predictor of what you have done in the past is a predictor that you can do it again. If you did it before, you could do it again. In a behavior interview, an interviewer doesn't want to know or what you think you can do. The interviewer wants to know what you actually can do and have done and prove it using the STAR method. If you don't know anything about that, my friend, go below, my friend, and click on the link and watch all of it so you can understand. So when they ask you a question, and you'll know it's a behavior interview question when it comes out, something like this. All right, Darnell, tell me about a time when you did X, Y, Z. Tell me about a time when you handle some situation. How did you handle conflict at work with a coworker? Tell me about a time when you were supposed to do something and didn't get done. When you hear an open-end question, it is a behavior interview question, and you address that by using the STAR method. So how do you handle by not getting yourself in that situation in the first place? How do you avoid this mistake that majority people make? It starts with your resume. Stop submitting your resume to positions you have not done already. Remember this phrase, if it doesn't fit, don't submit. Stop submitting your resume to stuff you've done before. What you think, if I submit my resume to a hiring manager and I haven't done it before, I'll read your resume and think, hey, you might be the person I might be looking for. No, I'm not. I'm not doing that. First of all, if you have me to read before I'm ready to read, I'm not reading it. It's a delete. And if you don't customize your resume to this actual position, it will never get past the applicant tracking system. Oh, you don't know what the applicant tracking system is. Come on, go below. In, in, in the link, it tells you how to handle to get your resume past the applicant tracking system. Go below. Here, I got everything that you need. Go below. It's there. It'll tell you how to craft your resume to get it past the applicant tracking system. That is the case, my friend. So when you look at an opportunity, you must customize your resume to the actual, res actual opportunity because you have done it already. If you do that, my friend, and you get into the interview, every question they will ask you, it will become easy because you have done it already. It's not something you will have to make up or think about. All you have to do is put everything like dominoes in your mind and one domino knocks over the another one because you have actually done it already. That is the number one job interview I see that everybody makes and now you know how to avoid it. So that's the recap. The recap is never submit your resume to positions you never have done before. If it doesn't fit, don't submit. And so when you get into that interview, you will know how to do it because you have done that position already. So I told you about my interviewing cheat sheet. The interviewing cheat sheet is a seven surefire steps to get more job offers. It'll show you how to craft your resume. It'll show you how to handle the question of tell me about yourself. It'll talk about the behavior interview questions. It'll give you questions that you should ask. So when somebody asks you, do you have any questions for me? You always say yes. I give you the questions you should ask. I tell you about salary. I give you everything. It gives you a practical, systematic way to prep for interview for in-person, in face in person in face interview go below click on that link get your copy today if you like this video my friend click the like button i really like when you click the like button share with five friends who are as always trying to do interviewing everybody should be custom and comfortable with interviewing because that's the game we play my friend and leave a comment any comment you have on anything about your career or interviewing Ask, which, ask it below with the, in the comment field and I will answer it because I'm Darnell Clark, the answer man, and there's no question you could ask me that I will not have an answer for. And if you haven't done so already, my friend, 
Hey, subscribe to my YouTube channel. On the side, click on that bell. It's a no it gives you notification every time I come out with fresh new content, which I'm gonna be coming out with fresh new content every single week for the rest of the year, my friend. So there you go, my friend. If you want to be able to master the interview, make sure you have done it already. This is Darnell Clark, your industry leader in this career game, saying there's one thing I know for sure in life, my friend, that is whatever you want in life, you gotta go get it. Now go get that job and go get that interview because now you know what to do. I'll see you next video. Later.